The president of Malawi, Joyce Banda. Not directly elected to her office, she assumed the presidency last year when her predecessor suddenly died of a heart attack. I, Joyce. But she is leading a democracy, and next year the people of Malawi will decide if Banda will remain president. She's already fighting for her political life. Despite promises to clean up corruption, new scandals have surfaced. In September, an accountant in her office was found with £2,000 in his home, and an official within the Ministry of Environment was found with £190,000 in his car. Then the country's budget director, her point man in dealing with government funds, was shot three times in the head. No one knows who tried to kill him, but he survived and is in hospital in South Africa. To stem the crisis, Banda dissolved her cabinet and fired her ministers of justice and finance. But the scandals have already taken a big toll. Some international aid donors have effectively stopped giving money for now, further exasperating the country's finances. Many people are publicly asking how it's possible for all this to have happened under Joyce Banda's watch. After all, she gave assurances in the past, including on this program here on Al Jazeera, that she would be an example for her people. Today on Talk to Al Jazeera, Joyce Banda will give us her answer. President Joyce Banda, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. I want to start by uh, talking about when you became president of Malawi, your country was one of the poorest nations on earth and low life expectancy, high infant mortality, uh, massive unemployment are just some of the things that continue to plague uh, your country. In your opinion, what are the main achievements that you've managed to secure since becoming president? Uh, when I came in, um, Malawi was uh, facing serious problems as far as its economy was concerned. There was no fuel, there was no forex, uh, and forex had gone under. Uh, it was not on the mainstream, uh, meaning that uh, in the bank you couldn't find the forex. It was on the black market. And um, yes, indeed, life expectancy was low. And yes, indeed, there was hunger. Two million people were facing food insecurity. So what I, what I, what I can say is that um, 18 months down the line, we have been able to devalue our culture. We've been able to go through the process of reform. And that, uh, as I speak, uh, now we were at 30% 30, 30 uh, capacity by the private sector. Now they are at 68 percent, uh, and they, uh, and now we have forex uh, cover coverage of two months. It was uh, one and a half weeks when I came in. As I am speaking now, uh, women, 675 women were dying giving birth. In 18 months, we've changed that picture. We are now at 460. It's not good enough, but we have made that kind of progress. So uh, what I can say is that. Uh, we feel that we managed to recover the economy. But other things have happened that have awakened me. Uh, what I have discovered is that uh, may perhaps the reason why Malawi remained where it is for 50 years, which is what we are exiting now, was that it recovered, it, Malawi recovered, built up, but then there were other contributing factors that hampered growth, and one of them being corruption. What do you think are the main challenges that continue to face uh, Malawi right now? The greatest challenges that uh, we continue to face are abject poverty for the people. Uh, and uh, these, these uh, contributing factors, uh, some of them are na natural that we cannot control. For example, not having enough food is as a, is as a result of not having enough rain. But uh, there are also other contributing factors on our part as Malawians that uh, we must uh, do. And I think top on, on that list, in as far as I'm concerned, is the fight against corruption. Well, you talk about corruption. In fact, once you took office, you promised that you would be uh, fighting corruption and you set it as the top of your uh, priority. And since then, in the past few weeks, we've seen reports of some of your own government ministers being arrested with wads of cash hidden under their beds, bizarrely. 
that's, surely, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Well, I, that's, that's, the, that's the point. Well, the I, I want to ask you, if you don't mind, 18 months into it, and this is still taking place, haven't you failed with no, regards to this no, fight against no, corruption? No, we have not failed. I, I, I don't know if you know this, that this cancer has been going on for 18, I mean, 15 years. And that uh, what the most important tragedy, the biggest tragedy in fight against corruption is covering up. And I think the best one can do as a leader is that once you discover, then you need to take advantage of the opportunity, which is what we have done this time, is to say that if it has happened for 15 years, there must be a cutout line that we must stop it now. And I believe truly that it, this, this tragedy that you're talking about provides a unique opportunity for us to stand up and stand up united, as I have done in the past two months, is to say that uh, one, we must face it head on. Number two, we are the ones who must do something about it. In our particular case, what we've done is to demonstrate that it, we, we must have zero tolerance against corruption. You must realize that I've been president for 18 months. In that 18 months, I had to recover a tattered economy. And I had to recover a tattered economy. I had to uh, gain confidence. I had to get back on track in 18 months. But having discovered that the problem we are going to have is that we can recover, but it will not amount to much unless we fight corruption, we have decided to stand united. In the past two months, we have, I have spoken to the faith community, to the civil society, I have spoken to opposition leaders, and I have spoken to the donors. And one thing that is becoming out clear is that we must set aside our political beliefs or affiliations, but, and, but hold hands and fight this together. And I believe that uh, we can leave this road in this millennium. You touch upon the donor countries, and do you feel that maybe you've been abandoned by them? Because right now, for example, the UK, which is the single largest donor to Malawi, has suspended its aid to the country because of its concerns of corruption, uh, claiming the International Development Minister of the UK told me that uh, it would only resume once his government felt they were confident the money was going to the right place. So you say that you're combating corruption, but in the meantime, they've withheld their, 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 their money. How is this affecting the economy? And what are you doing to try and win back the confidence of donor countries? What I want you to understand, first and foremost, is that the fight against corruption is not coming from the West. It has to come from Malawians themselves. We must own it. That is why I have actually set up committees. One committee is in the police, headed by an expert in criminal investigation, to investigate fast-track investigations into these theft uh, reports. Number two is to government has set up another committee that will report to Malawians on a weekly basis about the progress we have made. Government has drawn a matrix, a, a work plan into the future that will guide us about the steps that we want to take to clean up corruption. I have instituted a forensic audit, which is taking place now, headed by foreigners, to make sure that we find out the root of this vice. Number three, I have asked that we reinstitute, reposition our IFMI system. The one that has been uh, abused for 15 years must go. Now we have reinstituted and put in another one, and I have asked our international partners to bring in an expert to come and inspect it, to make sure that it has no holes. Mm. I have also, we have also arrested 68 people. We have 18 cases before court. We have frozen 33 accounts. I have dissolved my cabinet and such ministers, and some have been arrested. I have uh, asked Parliament to meet one month ahead of time. They were meeting in no November, they met in October. And I have taken the Access Declaration Bill to Parliament, and it has been passed. So the donors are there, and as far as we are concerned as Malawians, they are our partners in this fight. They are joining us. They are not... So why, why, why are they withholding the money then if, if all of this has been taking then, place? No, no, yes, they have to be, they have to be, you, you have to ask the donors, don't ask me. But do I, you feel I, let down by them? 
No, I don't. I feel that w w we are all disappointed and we are all traumatized. They have told us how they would gain confidence again. But we are saying what we are doing is also what they would want to see. And we are saying, even if this doesn't end up convincing them to come back, this will help us fight corruption. What am I saying? I'm saying that we shall fight corruption with or without the help of donors. Because it's a, it's a responsibility that I have to the people of Malawi. But I also believe that once this has happened, it, the donors will find it in their heart not to punish ordinary Malawians who are not part of the greedy people that store in the first place. And I have every hope that once we've done what I, once in, 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 in implementing what I'm telling you, in all these things that I'm doing, donors will also be convinced and realize that we are partners in this fight. So I, I, I want to assure you that uh, the donors, once they are convinced, they will come back. Can you say And by the way, what they have suspended is budget support, mm. not the ordinary uh, projects. Mm. No, 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 that is continuing. Okay. So can you safely say now that there are no ministers in your government who are involved in any way in any form of corruption? I made an announcement to the nation that uh, you are my son, you are my husband, you are my minister, you are my party person, you are my official, you are my enemy, you are my o opposition party member. You have a clear case of corruption, you shall go to court. And the court shall either vindicate you or lock you up. So that process... And you're confident in the judicial system that there's no corruption there? No, I cannot speak on behalf of the judiciary. It would be wrong for me. What I can do as the executive is to make sure that on my part, I do all it takes to do what I have just uh, told you, which is what we are doing already. Mm -hmm. But last week, Thursday, I invited the Speaker of Parliament and the Chief Justice to State House so that the three of us, heads of uh, the uh, uh, arms of, three arms of government, must discuss. I'm thinking that perhaps the speaker might want to initiate reforms in the law, that maybe we need to uh, tighten the law so that we have the ability to punish uh, people who commit corrupt uh, 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 actions more. But I also want to say that uh, I have requested that we as Malawians must look at the possibility of establishing a corruption court. Because then that will be another way of fast-tracking trials because of the, 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 the delays in the judicial system. But I do not want to criticize the judiciary. I truly believe that the Chief Justice would do all it takes to also fast-track the trial of these cases. Joyce Banda's statements that she is a fierce opponent of corruption and waste are not new. She's made them repeatedly. In fact, on an appearance to talk to Al Jazeera last summer, she explained how she was going to run her office. My, my concern is that uh, when you're passing through a period such as this, and uh, most Malawians are having to do without, and are making sacrifices, and they're making those sacrifices happily, not because it's okay, but because they feel it's necessary for us as a nation to do it, then I must be the first person to set the example. Do you believe that you have been setting a good example for the people of Malawi? Yeah, truly, I do, I do believe that I've been setting a good example uh, to people of Malawi. And for your own information, even this fight against corruption, what ordinary people in the villages are telling me is that uh, it's a good fight, so they encourage me. But what I also realize is that I'm very close. I didn't have enough time to do this. I'm very close to my elections. And so, for me, I had to make a choice. Do I want to do this knowing that it can affect my elections? Or do I want to wait? Do I want to cover up? If I cover up, then I will have let Malawi down once again. Because there were opportunities in the past with other leaders to fight this. So for me, I have placed uh, the fight against corruption before my political career. In a speech you made recently, you uh, announced your intention to reduce Malawi's dependence on foreign aid by 35%, um, within 10 years, that is, within the next decade. How do you plan on doing that? In 2001, my current Minister of Justice that I've just appointed, in 2001, he was the DPP, the Director of Public Prosecution. Mm -hmm. And he made an announcement that 
2,000, I mean, 30% of our resources are being stolen through corruption in 2001. We should have listened to him. And Malawi did not. So there have been warning signs along the way. In 2009, an expert who came to Malawi told the Malawi government then that we, we, they needed to get rid of the IFMI system, the financial system, uh, financial management system that I am replacing now. Mm -hmm. Then, in 2009, we were asked to replace it. Government did not listen. Mm -hmm. in, in the same year, uh, uh, somebody was caught with 450 million kwacha. An investigation started and it was stopped. We should have woken up then. We didn't. So o o o o all I'm saying is that right now, we have an opportunity now to do something about uh, but, the uh, but I'm talking about your, uh, uh, your announcement that you will yeah. try and it's, uh, essentially reduce your dependence on foreign yeah, aid. Yeah, so that what I'm saying, uh, related to that, what I am saying is that if 30%, if what he, uh, Minister Father Sun said in 2001, that 30% of our money is being stolen. It's going to corruption. Then and if we stop corruption right now, we shall okay. save 30%. So it's not even any, any rocket science. Mm -hmm. It's just straightforward. If people uh, are straightforward, are working, nothing is stolen, we shall save 30%. So we, shall rem we, de we depend uh, on donors for 40% of our budget. 10% will, will remain. We, I don't know if you've heard, but Malawi happens to be a very rich country, and we didn't know. We have oil, we have gas, we have layer earth, we have iron ore, we have coal, all these waiting to be exploited. We have beautiful soil, yeah. and we can expand our agriculture like nev never before. All that should even give us more than, more than, more than the 10% that, uh, that will remain. So I am just saying, just by doing a few things right, r these things should stop. And by the way, it doesn't have to be Joyce Panda. I have, as I've said, I've placed this fight before my political career. So if, if I'm not re-elected, that's fine. My only sincere hope will be, will be that any leader who comes in office will continue with this fight. But that's the only way. Well, we'll, we we'll speak about the elections in a bit. I just want to move on to some international or regional issues. You recently committed a number of Ma uh, Malawian troops to work with the United Nations in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Why have you done that? We've always done that. Malawi has been called upon all the time to contribute troops because of our, what we are told is that our, our soldiers are very professional. Our troops are very professional and well behaved, well disciplined. So it's not the first time. We have participated across Africa in many countries. So, but this particular time, it is SADC. And in SADC, yes, we have also responded to the UN and contributed uh, troops. It is our uh, responsibility as a, as, a, as a member of Africa. Okay, and staying with the region, uh, you've just recently attended the Africa Arab World Summits in, in Kuwait. What's your thinking behind reaching out to the Middle East and how do you think Africa will be benefiting with closer ties with the Arab world? Uh, we, we have had close links all the time between the two, uh, Africa and the Arab world. What I feel is that we should have developed this relationship, this partnership even more. As somebody said today in our meeting, in the plenary, that even though we have been close, yet we have not been, because we have allowed even our trade to have an intermediary. That sometimes you have gold here, but we shall buy your gold from the West. Or we have products in Africa that will get to the East through the West. What we are proposing now is that this is an opportunity for us to have direct relationships, direct trade agreements, direct partnerships. That, 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 that is what we are advancing. And for me... And do you think the West will allow for that to happen? Well, that is where we must stand firm. Mm. We must stand firm and develop our own relationships. The most recent corruption allegations and scandals are, of course, not the only things voters in Malawi care about. The country is dealing with widespread social and health issues that are also on the agenda. HIV AIDS is a big problem, and the issue of gay marriage is now publicly discussed. Last year, in response to international pressure, Banda's government issued a moratorium on laws banning homosexuality and released two gay men from jail. They'd been arrested for getting married. 
Now opposition leaders feel she went too far and want a referendum on the issue. One of the main problems facing Malawi is the high rate of HIV. What's being done to curb that and have you been receiving help from international organizations or from other countries? Yes, uh, we, we've been having a lot of support from international organizations, including the Global Fund. And uh, by the way, I'm um, the champion for HIV, AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis in the Sadiq region. And so we've been having a lot of meetings. But Malawi is also championing uh, a new concept called the Option B+, Plus, which, which allows us to uh, begin to give treatment to a pregnant mother regardless of uh, their CD4 count. And that way we have found that a lot of children are being born without the virus. Mm -hmm. We have a half a million people on treatment already. But uh, this particular initiative is uh, giving us hope that we can end up with a, 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 an HIV AIDS free generation one day because all the children are being born without it. One of the hottest topics that is being discussed ahead of the elections is the issue of homosexuality. And there are some of your opponents who are proposing the possibility of having a referendum on whether to legalize homosexuality. What is your stance uh, with this issue? To start with, let me correct, correct uh, the misconception that uh, we passed any law on this matter. We did not. Mm -hmm. What I did is when I came into office, I gave this matter to the public, to Malawians to discuss. Because the laws that are made in Malawi must be made by the people through their members of parliament, in parliament. So it never even came to cabinet, because by the time it goes to parliament, it has gone to cabinet. It never even went to cabinet. It was left with the people to discuss. So what you're talking about is part of that discussion, is part of that debate. For me, that's a healthy debate. At the end of the day, we must do what Malawians want. Not what a choice banda wants or any opposition leader wants. But what, what do you want? Do you want it to be legalized or do you think I don't there want, should be a referendum? I don't, want, I don't want anything. I have no opinion on this. But I'm saying that if all Malawians one day want to have a referendum on this matter, I will never stand in the way. Because in Malawi, the way we operate is that what the people want is what shall happen. So this matter, I am even surprised that there has been any mention of a referendum because I haven't heard about it. Okay, final question. Uh, elections are coming up in 2014, which you will be uh, contesting. How confident are you that the elections will be free and fair uh, and peaceful? Number one, they have to be free and fair. Because this is the first president, and this is the first time that I, I have asked all political parties to nominate uh, uh, elections, members of, of the com electoral okay. commission. In the past, the last elections, the constitution is very clear that the president shall appoint electoral commissioners after consulting political parties. The previous president refused. But that's what exactly what I have done. I have asked no political parties. So that's step number one. That is to, uh, to, 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 to have... To, inclusive. To, yeah, uh, inclusive, even appointment of the electoral commissioners, because then that gives confidence to all political parties that their people are there. Number two is to allow autonomy and the, to make sure that uh, uh, there's non-interference in the process. Number three, there's an organization that was almost closed called the, the National, in, in, National uh, 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 Civic Education Organization, NICE, which was frustrated during the last elections and was not allowed to operate. I have just allowed them to reinstitute, and they'll be launching in a week or two. And that is an organization that will provide civic education to the masses so that nobody is left in any doubt of their rights and what they can do to vote for the person of their choice. We have never had violence around elections. If it happens, it will happen now for the first time. And I don't see why that should happen, uh, especially having created this kind of atmosphere. I truly believe that Malawians deserve like they've done before, to choose people of their choice. And especially now, I don't know if you know this, but uh, we are finishing 50 years. We are entering another 50 years. My, my position is that we should leave all the road, everything that has uh, stood in the way of Malawians' progress and prosperity in this millennium. And that as we enter 2014, we must go in there rejuvenated, clean, and just ready to run and prosper. President Joyce Banda, thank you very much for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much.